Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody, praise the Lord. We thank God for another privilege, another opportunity to come together and gather around the Word of God, especially in such a time as this. Uh, I'm, I'm just thankful to God to be alive today. And I know that those of you who are under the sound of my voice, you too are extremely excited to be alive. You still, as long as you still got breath in your body, there's still hope. And so I just want to encourage you to uh, maintain hope, hold on to hope. Because, you know, a man can't live without hope. You cannot survive without hope. So I just want you to understand uh, that our God is awesome. He's mighty. And he is the God of restoration. And so I want to talk to you some more. As I came to you on Sunday and talked to you about restoration, I want to talk some more about restoration because I need you to really get a hold of this. Uh, and it's going to take faith in order for one to be restored after devastation, tragedy, and uh, adversity has come against your life, you know, that's when our God does some of his greatest work. When you have been in your darkest hour, you know, at midnight, I've said it in time past, God seems to do some of his greatest work. And so I want to just get into this, but uh, I, I want you to know that restoration is literally a team activity. Uh, it, it is not a one-man gang operation. No, restoration, and you see, all of us desire uh, to be restored in full. Uh, but if you will sow into another man's restoration, then harvest for restoration will come into your life. Uh, so uh, I, I'm just encouraging you to take some copious notes on tonight. And before we get uh, going too much further, uh, we want to just enter into uh, the presence of the Most High God. You know, we got to enter into his presence, you know, with thanksgiving. And uh, we got to go closer, you know, uh, with praise. We'll say that this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, y'all, let's rejoice and be glad. You know, anybody trying to make you mad today? Well, wow. just choose to be glad instead. Yeah. Just choose to be glad. Just choose wow. to be glad. So, Father, I thank you that we enter your gates with thanksgiving. Father, I want to thank you for our lives, oh God. I want to thank you, Lord, that we have another day in the earth, oh God, that breath is still in our body. And I want to thank you, Father, that you continually give us hope. You're the God of all hope. And therefore, because there's hope, oh God, there's opportunity. So we give you praise, give you honor, and we give you glory. And uh, we praise your name because there's nobody like you, Lord. We can search all over. We can't find nobody. There's nobody like you, oh God. Uh, you are the highest of the highest. You are El Elyon, the most high God. And so, Father God, we thank you once again for your precious word. And then we thank you for the Holy Ghost, uh, the one who has come to dwell in us. You know, without the Holy Ghost in the earth, God is not in the earth because the Holy Ghost is God Almighty and uh, there's nobody like him and no man can stand before him. And if in fact, I'm talking about standing, before I'm talking about standing against him. Uh, and so Lord God Almighty, thank you. You're the maker of heaven and earth and all that is seen and unseen. Now, Father, give me, give me words, right words that should be spoken because Job said how forcible are right words. And so, Lord God Almighty, I just thank you for listening ears on today and receptivity of heart for those under the sound of my voice. Uh, I declare decree that receptivity of heart will cause you to increase and to be restored at a much faster rate. In the name of Jesus, let the church of the living God say amen. amen. And so we just welcome you to tonight's telecast. And so we believe that our God has a word, a word of encouragement to you and for you. You know, Sunday, uh, some of you uh, responded, and I want to thank you for your great responses. And uh, we need you to uh, continue to respond. And want to remind you, uh, it's still the will of God for us to evangelize, to go into all the world, and to proclaim the glorious gospel. Well, I'll do the preaching if you'll send me. You understand? I'll go if you'll send me. See, some have to be senders, others are goers. In this instance, I will go if you will press that share button. If you will press that share button, on your telephone, on your whatever device you may be watching the telecast on, just go right ahead and share and let somebody in because all of us are in need of restoration at some point in time in our lives or another. And so uh, I, I'm excited about uh, who God is. You know, he is the restorer. He is the restorer of the breach. You understand? And so I've got some things I want to just talk to you about, uh, getting some basic understanding you know, concerning restoration. But go ahead on, if you will, with me. Let's lift up our Bibles. If you have, you know, your Bible and your, your, your phone, uh, you have a good old school 
you know, manual Bible where you flip the pages, lift it up and let us make this great declaration and do it together. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. On tonight, I'm going to be taught the word of God. The word of God declares faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. After having heard the word of God on tonight, I'll never, no, never be the same again. In Jesus' mighty name, let the church of the Lord Jesus Christ say amen to that. Amen and amen and amen. So so we just thank God. If you got yourself a cup of coffee like I do, take a hit. Mm-hmm. Mm. Some good coffee right there. Praise the Lord. You know, the Lord drinks coffee so much so he wrote a book called Hebrews. You know what I'm saying? So Hebrews, so, so I know he's in the coffee. All right. Let's begin tonight by understanding once again that uh, we're celebrating and rejoicing because restoration has come. Restoration has finally come. It has finally come. And so we're in that phase of restoration all around the region, everywhere that Hurricane Ida uh, has attempted to bring destruction and has brought destruction. Uh, but restoration is greater than destruction. Uh, you understand? I want you to realize that Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He said, the thief comes, but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might indicating that life is greater than destruction. See, because life, the life that Jesus has come to bring us, will swallow up the death and the destruction that the devil tries to bring. And so let us understand and rejoice, be glad that uh, restoration has finally come. Because Jesus has come, restoration is already here. I said restoration is already yes. here. See, we can rejoice and be glad no matter what destruction Hurricane Ida brought. Now, let's get this straight. Hurricane Ida did not come from God. He did not come from God. We, we see the proof of that is when Jesus had to face storms, hurricanes, they call them tempests in the Bible. You understand? Jesus rebuked them. If storms or tempests or hurricanes typhoons were the will of God, Jesus would not have been rebuking something that came from God, for he is God, the son of God. Yes, he is. And so uh, that being the case, it is, it is quite clear. Anything having to do with destruction is not of God because God is a creative being and he yes. is still not yet stopped creating. He didn't stop, uh, you understand, in the Garden of Eden. No, he, he's continued, he's continued. And so I want to go further and remind you no matter, you know, that those of you on the sound of my voice, uh, maybe your home was literally destroyed by this hurricane. Maybe it was flooded out. Maybe somebody under the sound of my voice, you were in an attic, believing God for your life to come out of this situation. And I understand that that's a, that's a difficult and painful thing for a person to be going through, uh, you know, in, in the midst of a storm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the storms of life come to us all. Yes. But what is your life built on? Is it built upon sand or is it built upon the rock? See, because no matter how difficult a storm may be, category five, category four, it matters not if your life is built on the rock. But if your life, and just like some houses were built on sand, and when the winds and the waves blew, the house crashed down. The house crashed down. But when your life is built on the rock, I'm here to tell you, no matter how hard the storm comes, it can't take you out. It can't take you down. No, no, it can't do it. See, because when you get this revelation, that restoration has come. And so uh, our building, in particular, took a hit from this storm. You know, during Katrina, we got flooded out. And now during Ida, we received some wind damage that brought in some rain. Uh, but that's okay. We can see clearly now. The rain is gone. All obstacles. They're no longer in our way. So while uh, we're going to move forward uh, uh, on uh, this day and share with you, uh, you know, exactly some photos concerning the destruction and the damage that occurred in our South Campus campus on uh, Lake Forest Boulevard, 8600 Lake Forest Boulevard. You can see some of the classrooms. You can see the sanctuary. Uh, this, this is, you know, pretty extensive damage. But we're rejoicing Hallelujah. and we're glad because we know restoration has come. 
Yes, indeed. We know restoration. You, you can see right before you how, uh, you know, the sanctuary was damaged. That's a, an open ceiling, uh, you know, because the, the roof itself uh, was raised up by this devastation in this storm. Uh, but see, the devil didn't understand. He wrote the script for God and flipped it. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. He, he wrote the script for God has flipped it. You know, the fences come down over the yard. You see uh, the letters in our name. You may see they were damaged. But, you know, together, everybody hit me up in the chat. Together. Yeah. Right, yeah. see, together, we're going to yeah. put it back together. Yes. I said together, we're going to put it all back. Together, we're going to put it all yes. back. Yes, we are. Together. You, you understand? This is no one-man game. God has never called. You know, when God calls a man, he calls faithful, committed others to surround the one that he gave an assignment yes. uh, to fulfill the assignment. So all of you who recognize that your assignment is connected to mine, it's time for us to gather together Amen. because wow. restoration has come. And the, the book of Joel is where we're going tonight is our foundation text, Joel chapter 2. And uh, you know, I, you'll be hearing this uh, in, in lessons to come. Uh, Joel chapter 2, because I want to get it in your spirit, even though you may have been damaged, uh, your, your destiny has not been denied. Uh, I want you to realize that the restorer has come. And we see that in Joel chapter 2, verse 25 says, uh, the Lord God Almighty says, and I will restore. I will, I will restore. Amen. See, it's time to shout when God says what he's going to do. Hallelujah. You understand? When God says what he's going to do, it's time to rejoice. It's time to be glad because God is not a man that he should lie. No. If God has said it, will he not do it? Amen. He is not the son of man that he needs to repent. You understand? Uh, because our God, uh, he doesn't make any mistakes. No, wow. God. And I'm talking about, he, I'm not talking about some people say he'll make no mistake like he sent, sent the storm. I know I ain't talking about that at all. Because God didn't send it. I already told you that uh, Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And so we are, the, the will of God is revealed in uh, what Jesus did when he walked in there as he gave us an example. But once again, Joel, the prophet, he is prophesying to the nation of Israel. And Israel had gone through, through some devastation like you have never seen. All the vegetation was eaten up. All their crops were destroyed. Enemies had come and filled up their wells with dirt where water was supposed to come out. They were utterly uh, devastated. But the Lord God Almighty says, I will restore. Amen. He says, now look, I'm going to restore. What, I'm, what is going to restore? To you, the years. Mm -hmm. Notice this, that the locusts had wow. eaten. See, the locusts would come and eat up their crops. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, all these are various uh, things that were used to destroy their crops. They were an agricultural society, and their harvest was extremely important to their prosperity. And so I want you to notice uh, Joel prophesying. He says, uh, the years. And some of you under the sound of my voice, you've had years where the devil has been destroying some things. You've had years where he's been coming against you. You understand? The locust, caterpillar, the palmer worm. You know, these are pictures and types, even the demon powers that have come against your life. Uh, you understand? But that, and that's been going on for years in some of your lives. But that's good news tonight. Amen. I said there's good news. Yes. Uh, it may be good for you to go back and to count the years that have been stolen from you by the devil and his cohorts. Anybody in the sound of my voice, you had some years, some time that's been stolen, some years that were unproductive and, and, and you didn't advance like you did at one point in time. But I want to announce to you tonight, our God is a restorer. Amen. Our God, I don't know how many years, I don't care how many years the devil has been able to steal out of your life and slow you down. Uh, God ain't done yet because God's about to get busy in your life. He wow. said, uh, I'm going to do this restoring. This is not something that you're going to do based upon your own strength. This is something that God Almighty has decided, declared that he is going to do it. So whether it was destroyed by the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, or the locust, our God declares, I will restore. I will restore. Now, I want you to keep hearing, God's going to restore me. Yes. God's going to restore me. It, it may look like there's no hope left, but you hear this. God has said, I'm going to restore. Yes. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this, and I want you to understand 
as a result of me doing it, the enemy can't stop it. Amen. No, the devil can't stop it. I want you to realize that. You know, I want you to realize. So, so whether once again it was destroyed by the canker worm, the palm worm, the caterpillar, or the locust, God wow. says, I'm going to restore. I'm going to restore. Now, understand this. The prophet Joel is prophesying. And he's prophesying that forgiveness and blessing come through repentance. Many times the adversary can have access because there's a need for us to repent in some area or another in our lives. And, and, and so I want you to realize that Joel is prophesying that forgiveness has come. See, restoration is connected to forgiveness. You understand? So forgiveness, no matter what you have done, no matter where you have failed in life, God is interested in you being restored. Amen. And number one area of forgiveness, you got to forgive yourself. Yes. You must forgive yourself. You know, and for some people that's easy, but then you have to forgive others. Amen. Others who have hurt you, others who have left you for dead, others who have talked about you, mistreated you. Amen. After you have done them good, after you have fed them and yeah. nourished them, they turned around on you. But uh, I want you to understand that your restoration is connected to your forgiveness of those who've done you wrong, Amen. those who have hurt you, those who demonstrated they didn't care about you. Can you talk to somebody who you know was talking bad about you? Can you give them any more space and time or you, or you have to just forever be against them? No, 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 no. Could you have a coffee, a cup of coffee with somebody who lied on you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mistreated you. I mean, shoo shooed and gossiped about you. Oh, well, go ahead on and forgive them because your restoration is not worth being lost Thank messing you. with people uh, who you need to forgive. Yes. My, my, my. He was also declaring that the promise of forgiveness encourages repentance. The promise of forgiveness encourages repentance. Has the devil ever stolen anything from you? Yeah. Those of you who understand my voice, has the devil ever stole anything yeah. from you? Yes, indeed. If you live in this life, it is very likely that the devil has been able to get a hold of something that belongs to you. But let me tell you something. Even if you stole it, maintain your joy. Amen. Maintain your joy. Because those who maintain joy, it's difficult for the devil to get their goods. Yes. But however, in the midst of Israel's devastation, God Almighty sends a man. He sends a prophet named Joel, and he sends him with a powerful message. Well, I want you to understand, in the midst of your devastation, God has sent a man. Amen. And my name Amen. is not Joel. Amen. Some uh, call me Herb. Others call me Herb who got a word. Well, I got a word for you. I got a word for you. A word that God Almighty would like to restore you. God would like to bring you back and put you in a position that's better than you've ever been. Amen. He'd like to take you higher than you've ever been. Uh, he'd like to show you favor. And favor is worth more than a thousand days of labor. Yes. Uh, no, no, you won't have to work for this one. God Almighty said, this is something I'm going to do. Now, 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 I want you to understand, uh, because the devil has stole something. Anybody out there, you recognize the devil has stolen from you, but you want it back. You want it back. You're going to take back what the devil has stolen from you. Well, it's going to require forgiveness. It's going to uh, require repentance. You yeah, understand? But uh, I want you to realize that Israel experienced devastation like no one else had seen during this time period. And that's why God raised up a man. He raised up Joel and to come and give them some encouragement. You know, our God is a God of hope. Uh, when there seems to be no hope, God works in ways you cannot see. Amen. God will make a way for you. I said, yes. God will make a way for you. Amen. When the devil thinks he has you pent against the wall and your back is against the wall, and there seems to be nowhere that no way that you can come out. Our God has already made a way. Oh my God. I'm telling you, he's working in a way you can't see. Yeah. Uh, yes. But God is working a way just for me. How about you? Come on, say it. God's working. A, come on. God's making a way for me. God's yeah. making a way for me. He's making a way for me. You know, uh, when the bills are stacked up and oh, money seems to be funny. I want you to understand God is working away. Amen. God is working away. And somebody, somebody might say, well, you don't know the devastation that I've been through. You don't know the difficulty I've been through, but God knows. God knows every tear you cried, every bit of worry you've had, but he said, can you trust him? 
Can you trust them? Can you trust that God will restore? That God will restore. In the midst of Israel's devastation, God sends Joel and he sends it with a powerful message. What is the message? God will restore. God will restore. Do you have the message? Are you hearing what I'm saying? That no matter what you're faced with, maybe you lost everything in this Hurricane Ida. Uh, maybe through this COVID thing, you know, you, you've lost some ground. You know, maybe jobs, maybe businesses uh, have gotten endangered. But I'm here to announce to you, even ministries, God will restore. Amen. I say God will restore. God. How many of y'all believe God will restore? God, will restore. Yeah, I it. Mm. God is a restorer in the midst of devastation. Yeah. I told you earlier that God does some of his greatest work at midnight. In some of the darkest hours of your life, God can show up and shine that light. Amen. Yes, he, yes, he can. Yes, he can. He sends Joel with this powerful message. And now the name Joel actually means the Lord Yahweh is God. The Lord or Yahweh is God. That's what his name means. When Joel shows up as God's representative. See, now one thing God does not appreciate is being misrepresented. Wow. No, no. You know, he wants to be represented so that, uh, you know, people would know exactly who he is. And so when a man comes with a word from God, you know, God wants that word performed in their lives uh, because he does not want to be misrepresented. Wow. So I, I know Moses missed the promised land because he misrepresented God. And so I want you to understand on tonight, no way, Jose, am I misrepresenting God when I'm declaring to you that God shall restore in your life. Amen. God shall restore. Uh, because once again, when, when Joel shows up as God's representative, it literally means that Yahweh has come. He's about to change everything. Hallelujah. I say God's about to change everything. everything, everything, everything. Amen. When devastation tries to show up in your life, I want you to learn how to rejoice and be glad because God is in the business of changing everything. And so what do we have to do to get Yahweh to show up in our situation? In my situation, what do I have to do? In your situation, what do you have to do? Number one, I got to repent. Amen. I got to repent. I got to repent. See, there's some things I need oh, to repent yes. of. Yes. Uh, that, that, see, repent means to change. Yes. It means to do a 360. I was going in one direction, but now I got to flip that. I got to flip that script myself. Amen. Amen. Uh, I got to because nobody can repent for you. Only you can repent for you. Amen. Only you can change for you. Nobody can change your mind, but you. Even God can't change your mind. Amen. You've got to change your mind. See, that's power in repentance. Yes. See, I, I found out that uh, you know repentance is a change of thought. It's a change of mind, and there's power in a made up mind. Amen. Have you made up? Your mind that you're gonna repent of that unforgiveness have you made up your mind yeah. that you're gonna repent of that disobedience to yes. god yes indeed because you know i found out this you know without obedience sacrifice is gonna show up oh, that mercy. yes it will i said without obedience sacrifice is gonna show up see yes. and yeah how many y'all know that uh obedience is better than sacrifice yes obedience is better than sacrifice hit me in the chat and shout it out. Just hit, hit the word better. Hit the word better. better. It's better. better. It's better. It's better. So number one, I got to repent where necessary because there's power in repentance. Yeah. Number two, I must believe that he is the God of restoration. Yes. How many of y'all believe that he's the God of restoration? Come on, lift your hands. You believe he's the God of restoration. I believe that he is the God of restoration. I got to lift, lift your hands just a little higher. Amen. Higher than you ever lifted him before because you recognize that he is the God of restoration. Then number three, I must declare that restoration is mine. Lord. Restoration is mine. mine. I'm talking about I got to declare that in the face of devastation. Yes. In the eye of the storm, I got to declare restoration is restoration mine. Is mine. When the winds are blowing heavy, I must shout out and declare that restoration is mine. Yes, it's mine. When it looks like there is no way, shout out, but he's the God of restoration. Yes. He's working the ways I can't see. God is making a way for me. Amen. Yes. See, so restoration, though, means to bring back to the former state or condition, even the original state. However, the Lord's definition is to make you better, is to improve you, is to increase you, is to enhance you and to multiply you. Anybody could stand to be multiplied in this hour. Anybody could stand to be enhanced and improved as a result of, uh, as a result of the restoration power of our God. 
Now, now understand this. The Lord's definition is to make better. Yes. He doesn't just want to bring you back to where you were. God wants to bring you back to a greater state than you've ever been. Yes. He wants to bring you back uh, in, in an increased and an improved state, in a multiplied state. Anybody can stand some multiplication in your life. Yes, 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 yes. Now, we have come from devastation in Ida, but we are uh, headed to restoration. In Amen. fact, I decree and declare restoration has already begun. Amen. It's already begun. Amen. It's already begun. Uh, I want you to realize that uh, the process has already begun. What the devil has meant for bad, God got a way of turning that thing around. Amen. Yes, indeed. The devil meant harm and hurt. Let me know that God can take something that the devil meant to harm and to hurt, like Hurricane Ida, and bless you out of it. Yes. Amen. You know, one thing I found out, if you're properly insured because you had blessed assurance, I'm trying to tell you something good is about to happen. Amen. Something good is about to happen. You know, when you follow the Holy Ghost, he'll, he'll, he'll tell you and share with you when you need to be in the natural, highly insured you understand? Because uh, if you highly insure in a time like this, you about to get paid. Amen. I said, you about to get paid. Amen. Some of y'all had, I heard that somebody, one of our, our partners, one of our members had a carport to fall on the car. You about to get a new car. Amen. <laughs> you about to get a new car. Amen. You about to get a new car because restoration has come. You're coming from the devastation of Ida. You know, one of the worst storms ever hit the coast of Louisiana. Uh, but we're about to be even better than it's ever been before. You've already seen the photograph that we presented to you earlier. How did this thing rip the roof, a portion of the roof on this 30,000 square foot building? That roof was ripped and that water came pouring through the ceiling and all the carpeting is going to need to be changed. Some of the seating is no going to need to be thoroughly sanitized and retreated. Uh, there's all kinds of things involved in restoration. And uh, I want you to realize that uh, something powerful is about to happen in God's house. Amen. And I want to know, are you going to be a part of this powerful thing that's yes. happening in God's house? Amen. Yes, indeed. Uh, you know, do you care about the house? Do you have a heart for the house of God? You know, uh, I, I believe it's necessary for us to have a, a time where we just celebrate the house of God. I understand we've been through this COVID season and we've got a lot of virtual, you know, services going on. Uh, but there ought to be a time or two where I can just come through God's house and say, I got a heart for the house. Yes. And I want to see the house restored. I want to see the house restored. I want to see the house go from devastation to restoration. Yes. Amen. In Israel's day, the Lord sent Joel. And this day he sent him rope. Come on, somebody. That's right. He said it to me. See, 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 I have a word for you that the same thing that's happening in the house of God can happen in your house. It can happen in your house. Now, I want you to realize that two things precede restoration. Number one, I get rid of fear. I got to get rid of fear. I got to get rid of fear that I can't be restored. I got to get rid of the fact that it was so bad that I can't be restored. See, there's some relationships that need to be restored. Uh, but fear is in the way of those relationships being restored. Well, the relationship was torn up, and I don't know if they're going to talk to me. I don't know if they will let me come in. Well, I want you to understand this. you got to get rid of that fear, because God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. So fear of future devastation got to get out your heart and get out your mind. Amen. See, because uh, that's going to hinder your restoration if you got fear that it might happen again. I decree it shall not happen for the second time. Amen. No, 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 no. Fear of failing again will hinder restoration. Then number two, so that's number one, don't fear not. Then number two, I got to rejoice. I got to, can you rejoice in the midst of your devastation? Yes. Can you rejoice in the midst of your fear? You got to you gotta make a decision that you're going to rejoice and you're going to be glad. See, because rejoicing and staying free from fear will position you for restoration. I said rejoicing and staying free from fear will position you for supernatural restoration. You know, there is a supernatural that God want to put on this thing. He want to restore you and give you sweatless victory God. over all these circumstances and all these situations. And I know many who are under the sound of my voice near and far. Uh, 
uh, are dealing with the effects of some form of devastation. You know, we're talking about this Hurricane Ida. Uh, just as many years ago, we had Hurricane Katrina, but we overcame that help. So this help will be overcome too wow. in the name of Jesus. Yes. And so uh, can you rejoice uh, after the miracle? Yeah. Sure you can. Well, why don't we put some faith in it and let's rejoice before the miracle. Glory. Yes, indeed. Let's rejoice before the miracle because rejoicing and staying free from fear positions me for supernatural restoration. Oh, yeah. So so faith rejoices in the midst of devastation. Oh, yes, it yeah. does. Faith rejoices in the midst of devastation. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, but once again, it's most, you know, when, when you walk by sight, it's real easy to rejoice after the miracle has been manifested. But when you're walking by faith, you don't wait for manifestation. You go ahead and rejoice and you're glad because you know you serve a God who can't lie. And he has, he has declared, I will restore. I will restore. Some of you have lost some money. I want you to hear me well uh, because the spirit of the living God has just informed me to remind those who have lost money for my sake, I'm about to restore. Amen. I'm about to restore. And even those who've been deceived by the devil say, I'm about to restore. You know, Eve was deceived, but Adam wasn't. Amen. But God, who's rich in mercy, he restored them. He yes. restored them. Yes, he did. He still used them. And I want you to understand, God would still like to use you. Even though you walked in deception and you got fooled, he still wants to use you. Uh, God is a just, just a, such a forgiving God, such a loving God. He is so rich in mercy. You know, his throne is the seat of mercy. That's where the blood of Jesus has been poured out. So I want you to realize that mercy is available. Yes. I want you to realize that his favor is available to you. In the, the period of the process of being restored, favor is going to lead the way. Mm -hmm. Favor is going to lead the way. You know, when you are position for restoration is because God has picked you. Yes. God has favored you. I, I'm trying to tell you on the other side of devastation, there's always restoration. Yes. And restoration will bring you increase. I said yeah. restoration will bring you increase. Glory. Maybe you have been waiting for a time. Well, restoration has come. Restoration has finally come. So rejoice, be Amen. glad, and give Amen. thanks unto the Lord your God for he is rich in mercy. Well, you know, I, I, I just got so much more I want to share with you. Uh, but just as in broadcasting programming, you, you, you know, the time limitations exist and we want to honor that. And so we love you so very much. And maybe uh, you haven't met, you haven't met Yahweh, the Je uh, Jehovah Yahweh. You haven't met him as the restorer. So I, I want to introduce you tonight, maybe, you have never even given your heart nor life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I just simply want to give you invitation number one, receive Jesus and become born of the spirit. That is the greatest form of restoration a man can ever experience. Number two, you have never been filled with his precious Holy Spirit. I want to give you an opportunity to be filled with his spirit, with the evidence that only the Bible promises. Amen. Not what men say, but what the Bible says. And then lastly, I want to give you an opportunity to connect with a man who has a word of restoration, who has a word of restoration. And that's me. I, I would love to minister God's word to you, to help you grow in his grace, to understand his mercy, and to have everything that God has promised. Well, we have a simple way of doing that. You'll see in just a moment the word connect. And I want you to go down and dial the number to that word, that word connect. There's a number that you'll dial and uh, text that. And then you just indicate which area that you have interest in receiving Jesus, being filled with his spirit, are connecting to this man of God. When God wants to change your life, he raises up a man and puts him in your life. Well, welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. That's what I want to do. Well, all family members understand that restoration involves all of us. And uh, it certainly involves your tithe, your offerings, your gifts of love. You know, we thank God for being insured, but God's will is still the tithe. It's still offerings. Amen. And so all the things that need to be restored, there's money associated with it. 
uh, and we thank God for the money to get it done. But your part in restoring the house of God is still necessary. Yes. And so I just want to give you an opportunity to sow on tonight. You know, there are various ways that you can give. Uh, and so on the screen, there'll be information that will reveal to you whether you'd like to give by text to give, you'd like to write a check, uh, you'd like to, you know, give online. Uh, there, there are just a number of ways. And the, then, of course, uh, you can also uh, sow uh, into me personally through the Cash App. You know, when I go to a restaurant, the meal is good. I always, you know, send a, you know, send a blessing to the waiter, the cook, you know, because it's just common courtesy. Yes. It's just common courtesy. Courtesy. You know, that's when you're well trained, you understand these things. You understand these things. You understand that in this life, uh, get rid of free mentality Amen. and understand that uh, the blessing is connected to my soul. Amen. All right, uh, let us do this. Let us pray. And then we're going to make our great confession concerning our giving on tonight because your church needs you. Uh, it's, it's not more apparent than right now. If not now, when? Amen. Uh, it's time for us to be faithful. Uh, to the will of God through the tithe and through offerings. And because without your tithe, without your offerings, the church couldn't have the insurance that it has mm -hmm. to take care of things like this when they occur. But thank God for those of you who have been so faithful uh, with your tithe, with your offerings, even through this pandemic. And uh, we just decree and declare that great blessing come upon your life as a result of you being obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, all right. Father, I just thank you for each and every person on the sound of my voice, oh God, that is not only sowing, but encouraging others to sow through their own testimony about the goodness of God. So Lord God Almighty, thank you. I set my heart in agreement for a multiplied return on the seed that they're sowing on tonight, for a seed of restoration in their own life being multiplied. In Jesus' mighty name, let the church of the living God say amen. amen. All right. Uh, Let's make this great confession concerning our giving. It's that information it will be on the screen and you can uh, simply recite it along with me as we give today's tithes and offerings. We believe we receive jobs, or better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions. False money found gets demolished and royalties received. We receive settlements, estates, and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises. Well, 2021 is the year that our God has flipped the script, and we rejoice about it. In Jesus' name, I receive my harvest by faith. Amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. You're sowing your seed. Why don't you lift up that offering envelope? and make this declaration with along with me say seed, seed. i command you okay. to go to, go. to grow, grow to multiply grow. to return in my, in my life starting right now right. in jesus name i decree it's already money is already moving towards me okay. money is moving to more than enough money is moving towards us mm -hmm. as we speak in the name of jesus we love you so very very much and uh, remember this whatever you do Keep walking by faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Remember these powerful words from the great apostle Paul. He said it like this, for we walk by faith and yeah. not by sight. Bless you. We'll see you on Sunday morning. Yes. Amen. Somebody Amen. lift your voice in this room and shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Come on, I said shout out to God with the voice of triumph. You're worthy of our worship. Raise it up, say you, Lord. You, Lord, you are worthy. And no one can worship you for me. And no one can worship you for me. For all the, all the yeah. things you've done for me. And no one can. Yes, Lord. Now with a loud voice, raise it. Say, here's my worship. Sing it out. Here's my worship. All of my worship. Father, receive my worship. All of my worship. 
more time. Say, here's my worship. Here's my worship. All of my, All of my worship. God, receive it. Receive my worship. All of my, All of my worship. Raise it up. Say, you, Lord.